Right now on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m. Armed and dangerous, police want everyone to be on the lookout for this woman accused of a road rage shooting. Plus, a lifeline built on lessons from overcoming addiction. There has to be a safe place for people to let down those walls and truly be able to recover. The special treatment center one Colorado woman opened to help those in recovery find a purpose. And it's officially spring break season. People are hitting up the slopes uh, before they close. Uh, Denverites are heading out with their families. From brand new changes out of DIA to rising gas prices across the state, we're taking a 360 in-depth look so you're better prepared for your trip. Hey, you're traveling with Kids, the checklist is already oh, yeah. long, so we're going to try and ease <laughs> some of that stress today. Good Friday morning to you. I'm Brian Sanders. I'm Nicole Brady, and it's starting to feel a little more spring-like. Temperatures warming up for the weekend. The sun will come out. Meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo is here with a look. And I'm glad I have weather news that will ease your stress <laughs> as well when it comes to travel, because far too often do we have blizzards this time of year. Uh, really nice weather. Skies have cleared out. You can see from our Westminster camera there where we're under a lot of sunshine. It's going to be a beautiful but very bright eastbound drive this morning. Seven in Denver, eight in Commerce City, 17 in Arvada, but temperatures that are going to make you want to get on that plane and head somewhere warm this morning. It's a cold start. It's going to feel more like 10 to about 15 degrees below zero with those winds. And for those kids with the last day of school before spring break, we're going to be in the single digits and teens at the bus stop this morning. So it's again jacket weather. Still chilly this afternoon, but warmer than what we saw yesterday. Low to mid 30s for highs today. We've got Denver at right around 35. 30s covering the east Eastern half of the state and teens and 20s in the mountains. High country, very popular place this weekend and this next coming week and few weeks with spring break. We're going to see a little bit of snow. It looks like late Sunday. We'll take a closer look at that and how it could impact us here in town on Monday. Mike, in just a few minutes. Looking forward to it, Lisa. We are quite the team this morning because I have some good news as well. Your morning commute is shaping up to be a nice one. Green all over the map. I do want to show you our CDOT camera south of town. This is at C470 and Kipling. As you can see, traffic is flowing really smoothly there and that is the story across the metro. Let's go back to the map. We'll take a look at your drive time in that area. Westbound C470 from Wadsworth to I-70 14 minutes. Eastbound running about 12 minutes so looking good there. Westbound I-70 from Pena Boulevard to I-25 10 minutes. Eastbound 11 minutes so if you are headed somewhere warm you have to head out to DIA and hop on a plane. Things are looking good for you there as well. Thank you, Michael. We'll take a look at your screen here this morning. Commerce City Police need your help finding this woman. She's accused of shooting another driver during a fit of road rage. Veronica Costa joins us live and Veronica police say this woman is armed and dangerous. They do and get another good look at this photo. This is the woman Commerce City Police say shot another woman in an alley again after that fit of road rage. It's 24 year old Destiny Edwards. She also goes by Destiny Salazar. So we're going to run you through exactly what happened here. Police say Edwards and another woman, they were involved in this road rage incident. The two ended in a car crash in an alley that was near 62nd Avenue and Kearney Street. Both women had gone out of their vehicles before Edwards shot the other and then took off. Now, this isn't Edwards' first time in trouble. Court records show she has a long criminal history. She had an open warrant for motor vehicle theft from a February incident. She served prison time for motor vehicle theft as well. Edwards is considered our new dangerous. So if you see her, police are asking you get in contact with them right away. You can do that a couple of different ways. One, through the Commerce City tip line or Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. In studio, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7. Thank you, Veronica. We do have a follow up to breaking news we brought you yesterday. Police have arrested four people, including three juveniles, for a deadly shooting at an Aurora hotel. A 16 year old boy was killed and four others injured after the shooting Wednesday night at the Quality Inn off your race street just near I 70. All four suspects are being held on first degree murder charges. Our bitter cold over the last couple days had a lot of people scrambling to stay warm. A group of activists tried to keep one of Denver's rec centers open as a warming shelter for the homeless past operating hours last night. The city opened all of its rec centers as shelters this week during the cold snap. Police were called to the Carla Madison Rec Center on East Colfax. They offered six homeless people vouchers for a motel for the night and a ride to get them there safely. Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters is due for a pretrial hearing this morning at 10. She was released from jail yesterday after posting a $25,000 bond. Peters and her deputy clerk, Belinda Nisley, were indicted by a grand jury on multiple charges for allegedly tampering with the county's elections equipment. 
The Douglas County School Board will hold a special meeting this morning to discuss its next steps after a judge ruled that the new majority members of the board violated the purpose of open meetings laws. That special meeting will be held at 10 a.m. Earlier this week, a judge found the board members created a workaround open meetings laws by having a series of one on one discussions before telling Superintendent Corey Wise that he could resign or be fired. Here in about two hours, President Biden is expected to announce a new round of sanctions on Russia. In a speech at 815, he'll call for the U.S., the G7, and the European Union to strip Russia from its most favored nation trading status, and that would essentially end normal trade relations and allow the U.S. to increase tariffs on Russian goods. It comes as Russian troops are inching closer to Ukraine's capital. U.S. defense officials say they are roughly nine miles away from the city center of Kiev. Eve. Overnight, Russian President Vladimir Putin approved bringing in volunteer fighters from the Middle East and other places to join their advances. U.S. officials believe Russia is recruiting Syrians who are experienced in urban combat. Meanwhile, U.S. lawmakers approved funding to help Ukraine in its latest spending package. The $1.5 trillion bill is on its way to the president's desk. More than $13 billion would go towards military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. The Denver Department of Health is issuing a new alert over street drugs laced with fentanyl. It says officials have seen an increase in drugs containing the synthetic opioid in the Denver area. It's 50 times more potent than heroin. Of course, last month, five people died from fentanyl poisoning in a Commerce City home. The department advises people to carry Narcan or carry test strips. And it's important to know there is help available if you're struggling with addiction. For years, one Colorado woman thought her life would be forever ruled by meth and alcohol. After overcoming her addiction, she's now helping others facing the same battles at a treatment center in the heart of Rhino. Here's Denver 7's Jessica Crawford. With the feeling of calm that surrounds her, <laughs> You'd never imagine the chaos that overtook Christabel Stansberry's life. I experienced homelessness, I experienced domestic violence, I experienced um, being used in ways that I wouldn't want anybody to be used. A heartbreaking pattern that started when she was just a kid. I was a methamphetamine addict for a while and then later I just drank alcohol abusively. Stansberry battled addiction for years. I got to learn about the the way drugs and alcohol react with my brain. Like they light up my brain. They fill receptors and my brain acts a certain way towards the substances that maybe it won't affect another person. Part of what put her on the path to recovery, addressing her underlying trauma and finding other things that brought a spark into her life. She took a recovery program that had her volunteer with a business. I started with you know, implementing a billing system for someone. And, you know, I just started with these smaller tasks and then I started building on that and building on that and building on that. And, you know, I found out that I was good in this area of being able to put the building blocks together for a business. And then also being able to bring a very unique perspective to the table of somebody who's, you know, like gone through this. She opened Chrysalis Continuing Care in November of 2020. This is our group room. Bringing that same perspective to Brett Mendes, who says treatment couldn't have come at a better time. Things have not gone well. You know, nobody shows up at a place like this because life is working out. One of the things that you said that really stuck out to me that was so powerful was the importance of living a life that is worth staying sober for. Can you talk about what that is for you? Taking the time to invest in relationships, um, being willing to promote them in my life to, to a, a level of status. A lot of those things are not just valuable, but they're challenging. Addressing the root causes of addiction, then taking on challenges that could lead to a different path. I really wanted to do something that was big. And now she's helping others do big things too. There has to be a safe place for people to let down those walls and truly be able to recover. If you know someone who is battling addiction, we have resources and how you can get in touch with Chrysalis Continuing Care on thedenverchannel.com. Lisa.
It is right now, well, just about 610, and we're in the single digits and low teens right now, so it's a pretty chilly wake-up forecast. A nice warm-up in store, though. We're going to see 20s by about 10 o'clock, and then we'll be in the mid to upper 30s for highs this afternoon. This is just the start of what's going to be a beautiful couple of days, a lot warmer this weekend. We'll take a look at that on the Super 7 Day coming up. Beautiful weather, and we also have a beautiful commute this morning. This is your traffic map at this hour. As you can see, mostly running in the green. We do have a few slowdowns I want to tell you about coming up though in just a few minutes. Well, time to break out the peanuts and Cracker Jacks. The MLB lockout is finally over the new opening day set for the Rockies. And it's that time again. We spring forward this weekend and it can really take a toll on your body. A doctor weighs in on how you can prepare yourself for the change next.